Okay. Two years ago, when we were in El Salvador, Lillian uh, visited with me one afternoon about something that uh, the women could learn. She was very excited that the men were able to have class, and her husband was involved in that, but she wanted to know if there was something that could be done for the women. So I talked to Gene, and he talked to Tools for Opportunity Board, and to Guillermo, and you know, different ones, and we began to consider the possibility of doing something for the ladies. Um, because we had to sit out a year, we were able to plan a little bit more for this year. And so this year was the first year that we had a class um, at the same time that the men were having their class, the women were having a class, and it was a sewing class. Uh, we had 20 women from the community that were selected to be in this class. Um, it started on Monday morning with the, with the men, and it ended Wednesday afternoon. And it was just very exciting to see them and how quickly they just um, adapted to the things that were going on, what we were doing. They made um, three projects. They started out making a tote, and then they made, uh, they, then their assignment for Monday night was to go home and measure a window in their house and bring the measurements back, and then on Tuesday, they made a curtain to go on that window, and then they started Tuesday afternoon cutting out for a backpack, and they finished that then uh, Wednesday morning. Um, and then we had our little ceremony, so then they, that's when they were given their sewing machine, fabric, sewing notions that they'd been using, um, additional things. And then on Thursday, um, 16 of the ladies came back Thursday morning, and Marilyn and I did an embroidery class with them. Um, and in each of these classes, a few of the ladies had sewn before. They had, they had sewing machines. Um, one, of the, one of the ladies had said that the only sewing machine she had ever sewn on was a treadle machine. Um, and some of them had not ever had opportunity to sew on a machine. They had done hand sewing, trying to make things and, and hand sewing something. Same with the embroidery class. Some ladies had done some embroidery, but a lot of ladies had never had the opportunity to learn how to do any embroidery stitch. And they were just so open to doing projects and helping one another. That was the thing, because we had to have an interpreter, we couldn't always be with everyone. So the ladies that had done things were a little bit more familiar. They stepped right up and started helping one another. It was beautiful to see how they, they supported each other in all the activities, or, I mean, all the projects that they were doing. Um, and this being the first time that Tools and that us ladies had done this, um, our learning curve was very big on how to set up our classes, how to, how to do things. So we were kind of learning along with the ladies as well as how to teach. Um, and they adapted to everything we wanted to do. They were just so gracious, um, which was one of the things that we shared back with them, how much we appreciated their patience and how they were able to just kind of go with us. So it was a very successful four days we were together. And being women, sharing together, we, they shared their personal stories with us, um, and that made it even more special. What, Guillermo, what was your experience in working with Lily and, and the others in getting this set up? How, how did the women respond? Well, from my perspective, um, I think they responded simply you know in awe i mean they it seemed to them that they were daydreaming uh there's so many stories to share but there's one that stood out the most for me in particular primarily not only because i was part of it but also because i got to translate it there was this lady um I forgot her name right now i can't remember but uh she actually has 
uh, a baby girl with special needs. And um, Reina. Reina. Reina, that was her name, Reina. And I remember when I first went out to the community to meet with them, this was prior to knowing who was gonna be part of the group. I was going out there to meet with the ladies that had been proposed to participate in the training. And after the, the, the talk that I had with them and about the requirements that the Tools for Opportunity had and, and what was gonna be the procedure, they didn't know who was gonna be chosen. And uh, at the very end, Reina stood up and she kind of waited for everyone to kind of just, you know, start walking out. And then she approached me and she said, uh, Guillermo, I'd like to ask you a personal question. I said, sure. She said, um, I would love to participate in this training, but I have a difficulty. I have a young daughter with special needs and I cannot go to any kind of training that will not allow me to have her next to me. And when she said it, she said it in a very, uh, you know, sad way, kind of like expecting for me to say no, but on the contrary, I said, of course. And then her eyes just widened up and her eyes got watery. I didn't understand why. Mm -hmm. And until the day of the trainings when she brought her, her daughter with her, uh, who, it's a lovely girl. I don't remember her age. She's probably 15 or 16. Uh, but she's in a chair, uh, she didn't, you know, she always had this beautiful smile on her, and you remember that. And uh, at the day of the training, I remember she stood up in front of everyone and said, the very little opportunities that had come for women that I wanted to participate and be a part of, I was denied that opportunity because of the condition of my daughter. And so she said that she was very grateful. She thanked Tools for Opportunity from the bottom of her heart because Tools for Opportunity had truly given her that one opportunity. She even said it herself. She had prayed to the Lord for just one opportunity to be able to do something that would allow her to be productive and take care of her daughter at the same time. And so she literally said at the end of the training that with that machine, with that sewing machine that you had given her, and with the skills you have taught her, she was more than sure that she would be productive, she would make dresses for her daughter, she would make all kinds of things without having to leave her daughter. And she said that was the best experience and the best thing that could have ever happened not to her but to her entire family. And she literally had tears in her eyes at the end and she said that tools for opportunity, um, you know, Pam, Carol, Eileen, and, um, and Marilyn were God's sent angels. You came here, you were the answer to her prayers. And that I think made a huge impact on all the ladies that were there. Because somebody else also mentioned that even though they knew themselves, their faces, never had they had the chance to sit down and, and, and talk and learn and teach each other. So this project overall from my perspective was just the most successful project that you can imagine because not only did you bring a group of women to work together to you know associate themselves to learn from each other but at the same time to learn from you and uh, I'm the interpreter yes I translate I you know go back and forth but the truth is at the end of the day language is no barrier because the true language of this is love and solidarity and that's exactly what this you know, beautiful workshop actually, uh, to me, is exactly what it gave to the community. You gave hope to the ladies for a better future. You taught them the skills, and not only that, but you gave them the machine, and you gave them that vision that they can become empowered, and that they can do anything they set their mind to. So overall, I think it was a very successful project that it will go a long way, and I think, you know, your presence in there means the world to them. Because no local government, no, not even the central government has gone as deep as you have to wanting to know about their daily lives, their challenges, and to say, we are here to help, we are here to walk together. To me, that is the best thing that a project you know, can do for the families and for the people, for the community, and for the country as a whole.